This is a poem called The Fish. The first fish I ever caught would not lie down quiet in the pail, but flailed and sucked at the burning amazement of the air and died in the slow pouring off of rainbows. Later, I opened his body and separated the flesh from the bones and ate him. Now the sea is in me, I am the fish, the fish glitters in me, we are risen, tangled together, certain to fall back to the sea. Out of pain and pain and more pain, we feed this feverish plot. We are nourished by the mystery. I'm tied. George, um, George Eliot and her husband, really, George Lewis, used to um, refer to some of the material goods that they have by the names of books. They would take out their new uh, set of dishes and, and uh, say, these are the Silas Marner dishes. <laughs> or the uh, mill on the floss curtains. <laughs> and we have at least a few cups and saucers that are the wild geese cups and saucers in our household. Um, so this is wild geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. This night for me is a kind of model of how a poet and a community can be together and what a poet does in a community. I, I love the way that you all love Mary. <laughs> and, and also Stanley, and all Greg probably too, everybody. Um, and I want you to sympathize with me because now I'm supposed to ask questions <laughs> of Mary. And Think about it. I, in, uh, when I read Mary's poetry, I assent to every line. I say yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and when I think of a question, the, the answer comes forward immediately out of the text, I've noticed. And besides, her text itself is full of huge, imponderable, unanswerable questions like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> and, really? And, and, what, and what can you do about it? <laughs> Deep blue night. I love those questions that she fills her poems with, and they are, they leave me opened and empty and pleased to have no answers. Oh. 
Is that the way you want it? <laughs> that's the first I, yeah, question. Yes, I, 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 that's absolutely the, the way I, I want it. Now, whether one is writing for the sake of the poem or the sake of one's own sensibility is another question, but, but that so many of us live most of our lives seeking the answerable and somehow demeaning or bypassing the, those things that can't be answered and therefore denuding one's life of, of the acceptance of mystery and the pleasure of mystery and the willingness to live with mystery is greatly what I think about. And if I could do something for people, I would say, love, don't forget the mystery. Love the mystery. Be glad of it. Don't want answers all the time. So yes, absolutely uh, central. And becoming more so. More questions are on their way. Uh, Not from me. No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs>